Hello everyone and welcome to the English Teacher's Guide to how to answer section B for the new AQA GCSE English Literature Paper 1 which is Shakespeare and post 1914. How to plan this and the way that planning method should work is in my previous video so please feel free to view that as well. Because here is the structure of the exam paper which we went through in a previous video. We then talked about the mark scheme and the method in my previous video and how to achieve perfect marks. We then once again looked in detail at the planning and the answering method. We then remind you of what you could look at when you're analysing to achieve 12 marks for AO2. We then decided to look at our question. Our question being how is screw percentage an outsider? We went through our planning methods, points one, two, and three. Talked about why that would help us achieve perfect marks, and here is our perfect mark answer. So if in Dickens' work the writer presents the character as an outsider by suggesting the character is cold towards others, it's also an charitable and unchristian character, and that the figure is attached from the realities of the world. There are my points. Firstly, the character screws presented as cold, and then focus on the extract in order to create an outsider. No in blue that was bitterer than he, and the heaviest rain often came down handsomely, and Scrooge never did. And I've used ellipsis there because I've only quoted what I need. I actually get more marks for that, it saves me time, and I look more intelligent. Dickens' use of prophetic fallacy highlights to the reader that the character is worse than the coldest and most miserable weather, whilst also suggesting that Scrooge creates an unhappy atmosphere for anyone who comes close. Additionally, the Alexis he never did suggests the character is never any other way towards other people. Moreover, the repetition of no and the long listing of the different groups, including Beast, re-emphasizes the character has alienated himself from all aspects of interaction. This isn't the only way in which Scrooge is shown to be an outsider. Scrooge is also depicted as unchristian and uncharitable. If they would rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Clearly, not only is the character unwilling to help anyone during a time when mass industrialization had caused huge problems in regards to disease, overpopulation and poverty, there's my context, but the character would, prop, would uh, actually, they all rather die, supported by the use of better. In addition, the Lexus surplus suggests that he sees the impoverished as figures who are not required and are easily really expendable. Dickens reinforces this notion by describing the character as a squeezing, wrenching, grasping, scraping, clutching, covetous old sinner, hard and sharp as flint, from which no steel had ever struck out generous fire, secret and self-contained, and solitary as an oyster. All the verbs used here create a constricting, torturous impression of a snake-like individual, reminiscent of Satan himself. In addition, the adject is hard and sharp, Reinforce how uncompromising and dangerous the character is towards others, reinforcing his uncharitable character. Interestingly, not only does a simile as an oyster reinforce that the character is closed to the world, but that contained within a character described even as harshly as Scrooge, there is a pearl within all of us. And there's some evaluation, there's an interesting point which I can then hearken to later to say, yes, indeed, that is the case, the pearl is rediscovered. But you get the notion. Finally, the character is presented as detached from reality in order to create an outsider. Scrooge knew Marley was dead. Square brackets, because I've added that word to make sure the quotation makes sense. Of course he did. How could it be otherwise? Scrooge and he were partners for I did not know how many years. Scrooge was his sole executor, his sole administrator, his sole assign, his sole residual legatee, and his sole friend and sole mourner. The use of the interrogative sentences, so a question sentence, during this initial interaction with a ghost suggests that Scrooge is so detached from reality that he's unsure whether Marley, his last link to mankind, is even real. The repetition of soul placed within another long complex sentence, I'm thinking about my first point, in order to emphasise Dickens' idea of isolation due to the loss of his only link to reality. The character's detachment is then reinforced when the character states, if I could work my will and Scrooge in dignity, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled in his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart, he should. This highlights that the character fails to recognise that Christmas is a time to escape the hardships of Victorian society, whilst the modal verb should highlights that the character is less convinced about this notion, suggesting he knows this is not the correct view or that he is in the minority. Overall, it's clear that Dickens presents the outsider Scrooge in such a negative manner in order to suggest to the readership that an uncharitable outlook upon humanity not only creates isolation, but that it can actually send you towards damnation. So I proofread, correct some of the mistakes in my work, and then I make sure that I'm happy with it before I move on. And that's it. That's what Perfect Marks looks like. 
Please again view the video to make sure you know how to write it. Please view the planning video, but well done and good night with your revision. Thank you very much.